or shut up. Let me tell you, bishops, from the Church of God in Christ. Amen. This is your student. Amen. Bring me your overseer. Bring me your overseer. Come forward. I challenge and welcome everybody. Stop threatening Pastor Jennings and come live up to your talk. Amen. That's right. Do you see me running at all? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to come outside. It's time to come outside. This false doctrine that uh, angels, uh, or whatever the case is, had intercourse with the daughters of men. Listen, people, we got to learn how to read. Uh, giants, these angels came and slept with the daughters of men and produced giants. It's a fucking lie, man. People got to learn how to read, man. Like, how could an angel come down and have sex with a woman and get her pregnant to the point where she can produce giants? You got to be a fucking idiot to believe that. Are you telling me that angels produce sperm? Are you telling me that angels produce sperm? One of the things Ringo and Gino have in common is they both do not believe the fallen angels had sex with the daughters of men to produce giants. Now, before we get into that and break down the scriptures, another thing they have in common is that they have publicly challenged anyone to their false doctrines. Ringo TV believes polygyny is still lawful in the eyes of God. Gino teaches monogamy. You may be wondering, what does this have to do with the fallen angels? Well, the root of adultery, the root of fornication, is the fallen angels mating with the daughters of men. And I will prove this later. This is how the bloodlines became tainted with sin and the fallen angel seed multiplied throughout the generations. This is also why polygyny was once permitted and once was lawful with conditions written in the law of Moses, but it's no longer law because of sexual immorality, which was initiated by the fallen angels. For those of you who watch my series, Polygyny is a Packaged Deal, I provided scriptures proving that the devil is literally a father. Hence, the reason why Christ told the Pharisees, You are of your father, the devil. And the devil, or the serpent as a seed, which is mentioned in Genesis chapter 3, which I will revisit later on. Zeno Jennings is a false teacher because although he does teach marriage is to be monogamous, he does not truthfully reveal the root reason why. But let's continue. So you're telling me that angels have a D-I-C-K. That's what you're telling me. First of all, Every being or creature that God made reproduced after its own kind. Yes, the scriptures state that in the day of regeneration, we should be holy like the angels. Were the fallen angels holy as well? Absolutely not. They left their first estate, which was holiness. In addition to that, God, who is holy and who is a spirit, did not need to use reproductive organs to create human beings and fill them with his Holy Spirit. Thirdly, you need to ask, why did God curse Eve with a menstrual cycle, nine months of pregnancy, and miscarriage, pain and sorrow, thus for eating a fruit from a tree? It's because she didn't eat a literal fruit. What she did was she committed adultery. He who commits fornication sins against his own body. That's what happened. And she did not commit adultery. Of course, she didn't commit adultery with Adam because that was her husband. She did do so with the serpent. By the way, the serpent was not a snake. It was a fallen angel who seduced Eve. Again, the serpent has a seed, according to Genesis chapter 3. Okay, and as I stated earlier, he who commits fornication sins against his own body. Eve sinned against her body. Also, angels have taken on human form. The scriptures say we have entertained angels unaware. And angels have communicated with men. They've wrestled with men. Angels even were offered food and ate food from the hand of Abraham. Okay, but let's continue. 
All right, let's get Genesis first. First in Genesis chapter 6, we're at verse 1. All right, let's see our angels making babies or we're making them. Amen. And it came to pass when men. Because first of all, let's find out the nature of angels. Right. Hold that and give me the book of Hebrews. Let's find out the nature of angels. Hebrews Glory chapter to God. 1. All right. Hebrews chapter 1 and at verse 7. Follow me. Hebrews chapter 1 and that verse 7. Mm -hmm. And of the angels, he said. Of the angels, God says. Who maketh his angels spirits. Who maketh his angels what? Spirits. Spirits. And his ministers of flame of God. Now the nature of angels are divine. And the natures of angels are spirits. Spirits, spirits don't have blood. Okay. Two things that he said there. He said the nature of angels is divine and spirits don't have blood. Now, the definition of the word divine is to be of, from, and or like God. Human beings are of, from, and like God because we were made in his image and likeness. Moreover, the spirits don't have blood. Then how did God create men strictly from the dust of the ground? when blood was not in the midst of the ground. And the scriptures state that everything God made was good. Okay, I'll get more into how the other nations lost their skin pigmentation later on. Okay, because you got to remember everything that God made was good. In addition to that, Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 says the life of the flesh is in the blood. And God, of course, is the giver of life. So the blood came from within him, a life-giving spirit. And he, of course, breathed into man's nostrils, and man became a living soul. This is proof that Jesus Christ is God. Okay, Because, again, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So how is it that all men are redeemed through the shedding of Christ's blood? If Christ was just a man, and just the son of God, how can the blood of a man redeem the sins of all men? Because he's God. That famous scripture, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Okay, he gave himself. That's what that passage means. The word of God was made flesh. So thus far, you, the viewer, you need to ask Gino and Ringo, where did the blood come from when God made Adam? If the spirit does not have blood. Again, why did Eve lose life? She lost blood after she transgressed the word of God with the serpent. And sperm carry blood. And if spirits don't have blood, spirits don't carry sperm. Nor do spirits need a productive organ for who are spirits laying with. That's right. You see, spirits are of no relation. <laughs> Give me the book of Luke. Now in the book of Luke chapter 20. Let me show you this with the Bible. Luke chapter 20, we'll start at verse 34. All right, follow me, Luke. follow me, follow me. Luke. Chapter 20. Chapter 20. Starting at verse 34. All this is in the Bible. Look at here. And Jesus answering said unto them, What? The children of this world matter. Wait a minute. Mm. Uh oh. Amen. Who? The children of this world matter. Are the angels of this world? No. The angels are not of this world. No. The children of this world marry. Marry. And are given in marriage. And they get engaged. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world. But they which shall be worthy to account that world, meaning the world to come, New Jerusalem, talk about the children of the resurrection. And the resurrection from the dead. And the resurrection from the dead. Neither marry. They don't marry. Nor are given in them. And then no one's giving them away. Neither can they die anymore. And they can't even die. For they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God. First resurrection, they are immortal like the angels and children of God. Fallen angels are not considered immortal. And they, of course, are not the sons of God in this context. Only holy angels are immortal and the sons of God because they are not sentenced to the eternal lake of fire. The lake of fire means death. 
Okay, and the scriptures say that nothing that defiles can inherit the kingdom of God. Fallen angels obviously were defiled. Demons are the offspring of the union between women and the fallen angels. Demons are defiled men, degenerate men. That's what demon stands for, okay, in my opinion. They don't have blood. They were once entities on the earth in human form before the flood of Noah, during the days of Noah. Now, their spirits roam the earth desperately to feed from the blood of men because, again, life of the flesh is in the blood. I talked about this briefly in the video I did titled The ABCs of Demon Possession. Ringo TV is on record saying humans are demons. Well, we are all in a fallen state. Some people are more wicked than others because they have a higher concentration of fallen angel blood in their DNA, and demons are attracted to this remedy. Geno Jennings teaches a false doctrine that omits the forthcoming judgments against the Gentiles for being a vessel used by the serpent in their oppression of God's chosen people. He implies that all men have the same sin nature, and this is far from the truth. The scriptures refer to weaker vessels, okay? 1 Peter 3, 7 says, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. What is it that makes Eve the weaker vessel? Obviously, he loses blood every month. And again, as I keep saying, life of the flesh is in the blood. So women are more vulnerable to demons because they, they lose life every month because of the curse against Eve. Remember, David said, I was shaped in iniquity. The womb of a woman is iniquity because of her transgression again with the serpent. Job 14.1 says, man who is born of woman is a few years and full of trouble comes forth like a flower and fades away. He flees like a shadow and does not continue. In Enoch chapter 15, verse 11 and 12, it mentions how the evil spirits were born on the earth. They oppress, they destroy, they do battle, cause offenses, and rise up against the children of men and women because they have proceeded from them. Ecclesiasticus Chapter 25, 24 says of the woman and the beginning of sin and through her, we all die. How is it that we all die and was shaped in iniquity through the woman if Adam and Eve both get from the same fruits and receive the same penalty? Why is sin initiated from her womb? Adam didn't lose blood from eating of the tree from the same fruit. You see that? All sin is not the same. Why is the so-called white man so wicked and has insulated himself in wickedness like none other? Because he and his descendants are also weaker vessels, and they do not sustain as much life in their blood that came from the Ruach God gave of himself to the original man. Remember, in the beginning, Everything God made was good. That's how you know the so-called white man is not the original man because he has the recessive gene. And that would mean that what God created was not good. Genesis chapter 25 verse 23 says, Two nations are in your womb. God was speaking to Rebecca. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger. Now, I'll let him continue and explain that further. Wait a minute. They're equal to who? Unto the angels. Angels don't marry. That's right. Because angels are not of this world. That's right. Sex is not an eternal act. Sex is a fleshy act. Sex is both carnal and spiritual. This is why God judges it eternally. Dino taught this entire message through his flesh and his own carnal understanding. Sex is spiritual because blood is spiritual. 
Otherwise, how can men take on the image and likeness of God, identity of a spirit who made men? How can God incarnate himself in flesh? People like Geno Jennings take scriptures that say God is no respecter of persons. He takes that universally, applying this vaguely and loosely to all nations. Yes, God is no respecter of persons, but we know he hates the sin. So when Geno vaguely says white skin and black skin, S-K-I-N, when he says that don't matter, he does not understand how sin corrupted Esau from the fallen angel seed, causing him to be weaker, having less life in his flesh or in the blood, being more vulnerable to demons. Otherwise, you are calling God a hypocrite who made a mistake for saying he has no respect of persons, yet in Genesis 25, 23, it says one nation will be stronger than the other. Okay, why would he make one nation stronger than the other? That would be being a respecter of persons. When the so-called white man is exposed to the sun, his skin turns red because he lacks melanin. He has a recessive gene. Again, why would God create the Gentile nations as weaker vessels? Because he didn't. The scriptures state that man was made upright but sought out many schemes. Eve's intimacy with the serpent perpetuated through the generations producing a serpent's seed in Genesis 3. This is how the so-called white man was able to facilitate the transatlantic slave trade with no conscience. He still has a soul, but he just has a far greater capacity for wickedness in his makeup. This is why Christ said you need to be born again through repentance in him. Geno's teachings are nowhere near this thorough because he also falsely teaches that people must pay a tithe, and he teaches this to attract the white people's money, and his church buildings remain open under the approval of white supremacy that he may prove what is that good and acceptable, the perfect will of Esau, you hypocrite. That's right. That take place in this world. That's right. This world. This world. And when the church make the resurrection, it won't be no sex there. Again, it won't be no marrying in the regeneration because we will be like the holy angels, not the ones who were defiled and locked up in chains of darkness. Because we're going to be like the angels. They are equal. And the, the angels. They are equal. 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 Equal and the Bible said he make his angels what nature? Spirits. Spirits. Now let's go back to the sixth chapter of Genesis. This is what I mean by making the Bible harmonize right. and make and rightly divide the word of truth. Right. Men have said for years that the angels that has that's supposed to have sex in the sixth chapter of the book of Genesis were the fallen angels. That's what they said. Right. That's a lie. That's I'm going to show you where the fallen angels are located. Give me Genesis first. first Genesis. And then we'll get the book of Jude. First Genesis chapter 6. Glory to verse take one. God. Let's go to work with the Bible here. Genesis chapter 6. We're starting at verse 1. Follow me. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Who was multiplying? Men began to multiply. Men was going after women when they were making babies. That's right. Mm -hmm. And daughters were born unto them. And they had some daughters. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Sons of God means servants of God. Men are called sons of God. That's right. The Bible even says about us. Now are we the sons of God. That's right. Yes. But yet they say they were the fallen angels. All right, let's see. That, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Yes. And they took them wives of all which they chose. They took the wives of what? And they took them wives of all which they chose. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man. Yeah. My spirit shall not always strive with man. Why? For that he also, for that he also was flesh. No, the sons of God were spirit. He that he also was flesh. They were flesh. They were flesh, but as I read earlier from Enoch chapter 15, their spirits roamed the earth because those demons had a higher concentration of fallen angel blood 
and the Most High reserved them for torment in the lake of fire. Basically, those fallen angels locked in chains of darkness reproduced through the women entities that were just like themselves for the sake of self-preservation. These fallen ones may have thought their offspring would somehow spare them from the lake of fire since they had some of God's DNA in them. But this, of course, was not the case. All right, then let me show you where the fallen angels are right now. Right now. The book of Jude. Now the book of Jude, chapter 1. Oh, I love holding this. It just gives the Bible for everything. That's right. Huh? Jude, chapter 1. It just debunk every lie these fellas come up with. Amen. Jude only got one chapter, so you can't hard to find. Right, that's the revelation. Only got one chapter. Listen at this. Jude, chapter 1 and at verse 6. Follow me. And the angels. The angels. Which kept not their first, first estate, but left their own habitation. They left their own habitation. The angels' first estate was holy. And when they took sides with Lucifer, they were cast out. They left their habitation, meaning they left their dwelling place. He has reserved He reserved chains. those angels in what? In everlasting chains. How long those chains are on? Everlasting. How long? Everlasting. How long? Everlasting. Everlasting chains? Under darkness. Unto what? Unto un under dark. No, in this world. Under dark. No, in this world. Under dark. Fallen angels were reserved in chains of darkness, but not all of them. More importantly, contagion of the serpent's DNA had already begun to reproduce in the womb of the woman. As I stated earlier, this is why David said he was shaped in iniquity. Those angels that was put out of heavens are in chains of darkness unto when? Unto the judgment of the great day. No, they own parole to have sex. Unto the judgment of the great day. No, they own parole to have sex once in a while. Unto the judgment of the great day. Those angels that was put out they are in chains, they are in prison, and they're going to be in prison until judgment. Give me the book of Hebrews, let's see who's going to judge those angels. Amen. Oh, it's a God. Do you get what I'm telling you? These liars talking about angels have sex. Angels are spirit. Spirit don't have sperm. The reason why this teaching is so dangerous is it misleads many from identifying the root of sin, which is the first step to knowing how to overcome it. So-called white people and black people don't sin the same because we don't have the same bloodline and we don't descend from the same forefathers. God did not create one race superior to the other because he is no respecter of persons. So the existence of men is linked to the offspring of sin. This is also why Geno Jennings does not teach Deuteronomy 28, Isaiah 14, Noel chapter 2, James chapter 5, and so forth, because he knows he would be forced to tell so-called white folks the wrath of God is coming upon them and their children because of their sin and the sins of their forefathers. He understands that white folk want to continue enjoying the fruits of blood money and not work for anything in restitution or reparations to the afflicted descendants of the transatlantic slave trade. And for him, that's bad for business. Often, I have mentioned how Esau has a 4,000-year faith deficit. The Most High commanded them to sell everything they own and give it to the poor, because when Christ returns like a thief in the night, they will not have enough faith to stomach the tribulation on such short notice because they haven't been through anything. If they don't make restitution, denying themselves in Christ in this life. So Gino is actually disarming them with his false doctrine. He's disarming so-called white people by not convicting them of their sins according to the scriptures. And God will have it that no man shall perish but all men come unto him through repentance, Christ Jesus. But first, they must know exactly what they must give up in order to sincerely repent. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 21 and 22, when Christ told the rich young ruler to sell everything he owned and give it to the poor, the rich young ruler walked away sorrowful, the scriptures say, for he had great possessions. If you read in Revelation chapter 18, 
we see this concept again through the behavior of the human beings. Revelation chapter 18, verse 9 says, The kings of the earth have committed fornication and live luxuriously with her. Talking about mystery Babylon, they will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. Geno Jennings will be among the kings of the earth sorrowful because he got many great possessions, including his luxurious church buildings all over the world. Trust me, if Geno sees the buildings and the people destroyed, he'll mourn and weep because that's his cash cow. <laughs> he won't be weeping because the people are dead. He'll be weeping because he no longer has access to their money. Verse 17, it says, In one hour, such great riches came to nothing. Can you see the parallel between Revelation 18 and Matthew 19? In Matthew 19, Christ commands the rich young ruler to part ways with his great possessions. But the rich young ruler was still able to decline and walk away peacefully at no peril because judgment had yet to come upon him. But in Revelation 18, judgment has come. Okay? Verse 10 says, In one hour, judgment came upon that great city, Babylon. Matthew chapter 24, verse 43 says, If the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Now you can see why God said you cannot serve God and mammon because either you're going to love one and hate the other. In this sense, so-called white folks have the most to give up because they store up more wealth on the earth than any other nation. So Gino's job was to distinguish between the two nations mentioned in Genesis chapter 25 because Judah mourned it according to the scriptures. Judah mourned, while Esau has way too much time on his hands, which he uses to persecute the poor, particularly the descendants of those who were afflicted in the transatlantic slave trade. I said, Blessed are you, from the poor in spirit, for yours is the kingdom of God. But woe to you who are rich. Luke 6 24. Woe to you who are rich. For you have received your comfort. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. What does that mean? Every person during their lifetime has mourned and cried at some point. Every person has laughed at some point. Okay, but the scriptures say the sacrifices of God is a broken and contrite spirit. And again, Judah mourned. Okay, so who is Judah? Judah is the so-called black man, okay? The so-called white man is very merry in his heart. He's very happy with the wealth of this world and has much folly in his voice. Notice how there is no mourning in his voice. When you hear so-called black people talk and sing, you can hear the seriousness in our voice, the pain, the sorrow, and the echoes of Egypt, our bondage in Egypt the echoes of the transatlantic slave trade. But Geno Jennings never teach this because all of his investments are also tied up in this world. I once referred to him as a white man with black skin. Spirit is divine. Spirit don't carry blood. That's why they appear and disappear. They ain't no relation. Bible says, and they shall be the children of the resurrection. No marriage. No giving in marriage. And the book of Hebrews talking about the church that said, we shall judge the angels. We're going to judge those fallen angels. Do you not know? Listen at this. Now in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And at verse 2. Come on, son. Do you not, Do know, you not know that the saints shall judge the world? The saints shall judge the world. And if the world shall be judged by you. And if the world shall be judged by you. Are you unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Yes. Verse 3. Know ye not? Know ye not? That we shall judge angels? 
do you know what angels is talking about? And they ain't talking about them that didn't backslide. No. They're talking about them that was put out. That's right. The church. That's right. The church. Going to judge hey. angels. Know ye not that we not shall know judge that angels? Shall judge angels. How much more things that pertain to this life? So no, I don't utilize the book of Enoch. I don't utilize it at all. I stick to what the Bible said right here. We don't read from the book of Enoch because he knows it clearly says that the fallen ones had sex with the daughters of men. Enoch walked with God for 300 years and was taken up prematurely by God. So I trust the revelation that Enoch received from God. Nonetheless, I want to close by expressing to you what I mean when speaking about the judgments coming against so-called white folks. Am I speaking to all white people? No. Some of them will make it into the kingdom of God. And of course, they will have to be servants and handmaidens because man cannot outlive his sins, which of course are passed down to his descendants because God will not be mocked. Whatever a man reap, he will sow. But if I said to you, so-and-so is moving out there where white folks stay, you immediately would be able to rationalize that they're moving to a nice neighborhood without receiving additional information. And if I said so-and-so is moving to the ghetto, again, with that same rationale and reasoning, you would know that black folks are predominantly there. Okay, well, that's what Christ meant in Luke chapter 6, all right? Do I become your enemy for telling you the truth? Don't let your flesh write checks your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. It's not personal, it's scripture. It's all about fates and gates. You've got to have faith and you're going to need God's grace.